hello and welcome to this week's angling blog today you join me on a sunday morning on a short session on the canal for pike um, conditions are really good it's overcast and the canal has got a tinge of color to it so i thought come out and we'll give it a morning and see if we can get a run and sometimes picking the right time to fish your venue can be the difference between you know catching and not and today the canal looks really good for the bite. Let's have a look at where we put the baits and the baits that we're going to use for the session. So on the last pipe blog that we did on the canal, we used the smelt on, on that session where we were trying to catch a pike on my birthday and we had two runs. So that's the bait that I've put out today. And like I say, it is my confidence bait. So fingers crossed, it comes up trumps again today. Right, so set up for the session is the same on both rods got a float stop two beads i get a lot of questions about these floats they're called mark houghton he's got a page on facebook mark houghton custom lures and he makes these floats so if you want to check them out um go and have a look on facebook they're fantastic an 18 gram stubby sinker and then my 18 inch wire trace down to a smelt and that is the bait they'll be putting out today on both rods. So cover plays a big part in piking and I feel so do patrol routes. And to the left we've got some cover and to the right we've got a bit of cover as well as we go down. So any pike patrolling that wall, hopefully moving between the two bits of cover will come across that bait. So that's where I've put bait number one. Right, so bait number two. I've got it positioned the other side of the cover and there's plenty of cover there but it is another gap so any pike sitting in that cover or patrolling between the two hoping to pick it up so that's where I've got both baits and today with all that cloud cover again looks like it's bang on conditions for the take so hopefully there's one or two pike on the feed so like I said there, conditions wise, it's really good. And that goes for the clarity. As you can see there, the rod in the water, you can't see the tip of it. And that's what I always look for on the canal that I fish. If it's got half clarity, then I'm always confident that, you know, it's good for the piking. Don't get me wrong, you can catch them when it's gin clear. But I've always had my best results when it's been half clarity. One tip that I do... Um, to reduce the effect of the toe on the canal as you can see down there there's quite a bit of toe on the canal today if you leave your bail arm open obviously and then put your you know your reel arm so it sits like that and your rod tip just under the water and then out to your float it reduces the drag on the water on the line and will keep you know your your baiting position and stop the line getting pulled off the the reel by the toe so a little tip there that i do with the rods so one question that comes up quite a bit in the comments and in private messages about the piking is how do i set the float so if i drop this bait just in the edge there you can see it hits the knot and that bait is on the bottom and it's set as if you were say roach fishing so you can have the float like that um, as long as the bait's on the bottom you can fish the float like that and as soon as the pike picks the weight up the float will lie flat like that and that is the indication that you're looking for when you get a take and you can fish the floats exactly like that like that and if you get a take the pike lifts the weight off the bottom and the float will lie flat but the way I fish it I'll show you now right so how do i fish mine what i've done is i've put the stop knot up the line a bit so as i drop this through now the weight hits the bottom and the float is just semi-cocked and it all comes down to how you want your bites to be now for some people like on the little clip before that that float rising and lying flat is what they enjoy in piking and their enjoyment of the take for me when the float is lying flat like that 
you start to see this when you get a take and then the float will slowly cock like that as the pipe moves away and that float going along the top like that and coming alive is where my enjoyment is um, all you've got to make sure is that you're not over depth so you're registering bites it you've got to have it so it's sensitive like that both ways are really sensitive if you have it cocked or whether you have it you know semi cocked or lying flat but it is only just lying flat and as I say when you get a take you start seeing the movement and it moving off so hopefully that explains about how I set the float so it's been about an hour and we've not had a tap now I'm confident that this pike in the area coming and looking at the baits um, but one thing I do is just twitch the bait back a little bit and if anyone's watched any underwater footage uh, you'll see how many times pike come in and look at baits now on a river and a canal it can be quite a dangerous thing to do because of the snags and in you know pulling a set of trebles along the bottom of a canal or a river you know you're going to find the odd snag but when it's hard going it does bring results so what you do you see how the float cocks and it's just one little tap just like that and you can feel the fish move along the bottom a bit come up and then drop again the weight and then just put the rod back down and see if that just entices out to take the bait. So first fish of the day on the smelt, it looks like a little, a nice little jack, let's get him in and have a look at him. Bit on unhooking the pike, get your line out of the way. Flip the pike over and in there like that. As you can see, the hook's just barely in on this one. That one out. And that's the one that's kept the fish on. Got a good hook hold. And there it is. Both hooks out the fish. It looks like it's been eating well, you can see here this part of the fish that's what you'll get towards February you can see the profile of the pike is a lot more full here as the feeding up for when spawning comes in about two months time we'll get him in the edge to rest and then we'll get a quick picture and a blog done so there's that pike just over six pound and a lovely little pike to start the morning as you can see from the middle bit here, like I said, been feeding well and a pike with no leeches on that's actively on the feed. Just twitching the bait back a little bit, brought the take and now like you see it slowly moved back into its lair. A countdown strike, set the hooks and a nice bite. As I said, the canal's got a nice colour to it today. So, you know, I was confident that we would get some type of action. And with it being so overcast, you've got to pick your right moments to fit, you know, to, to fish your venues. And today, the canal is bang on for the bite. Let's get this lovely pike back. And there's that pike resting in the edge till it's ready to go back. Um, I always have a set routine with the blog. Um, catch the pike, unhook it, and then get it in the edge to rest. And then do the blogging, and then I leave it in the edge as long as it takes till it's ready to go and this pike has been in the edge for about five minutes its gills are ticking over and it's just about ready to go back and that's what you're waiting for for the pike 
to be trying to get out the net as I said before on the blog the wild fish so once they're trying to get out it's a good sign that they're ready to go back so let's let this pike go there he is and off he goes right so the session comes to an end there now um, just the one pike but like I always say I come out for one chance of a fish and if you get it then I see that the session's been a, a result you know piking can be few and far between with the results that you get from it especially on the canal so to pick up that nice six pound pike is a result um, just got the rods out behind me now but barring the floats going in the next 10 minutes wish you all tight lines and I'll catch you all next time